Hey guys, welcome back to the channel again. In today's video, we are going to look on how we can recover our Arch installation using Timeshift and R-Sync and recovering the install from an external live ISO. So let's get going. So we are back here in the GNOME desktop and I have already Timeshift installed. And this is what we are going to do. We are going to first create a snapshot of the current system then we are going to install an extra package from the main repository and assume that this package will make our system very unstable. And I'm going to also destroy our grub installation on the system and then we'll try to recover everything. So let me first pull up time shift here and enter my root password. And since this is the first run, we are greeted by the setup wizard. So we'll select here rsync and click next. Now on this machine, I will save the snapshot on the same disk and on the demo coming up afterwards, I'll be saving the snapshot on a USB drive. So for now, we'll just select the internal drive here and click next. Now we can select also the schedule here. I'll just select here weekly. You can change this accordingly to your needs and then click next. And I will exclude from this backup all home directories as this is not actually the main purpose of Timeshift. Timeshift mainly purpose is to backup system files. So I'll exclude here the home files and click next. And the setup is complete so I can click finish. Now let's create a snapshot by clicking create. And it's going to take a moment here to create the snapshot. So I'll be back when it's done. So the snapshot is now created. We can click it and click browse. And we'll see we have all our directories in here. Let's open, for example, the user directory here and go into one of these files here, for example, the share directory and this directory here, we'll see all our files are here. So the next step is to actually install an extra package from the main repository. And so to do this, we're going to open up the terminal and I'm gonna go here full screen and increase the font size and type in sudo pacman s and the package I'm going to install is cups the printing system because it's not installed yet on this system and hit enter. Enter my sudo password and proceed with the installation by hitting enter. And the installation is now done. Now what happens if I try to reinstall the same package here? We have the warning here reinstalling because of course the package is installed. So we'll keep this in mind because when we restore the snapshot we'll not be seeing this again. So I'll type in n and hit enter and clean up the terminal. The next thing I want to do is to destroy our grub installation. So to do this, I'm going to switch to a root user by typing in su and a dash and hit enter. Enter my sudo password. And now navigate to the boot directory by typing in cd slash boot. And then typing in ls to see what's in here. And you see we have a grub directory in there. So we want to delete this by typing in rm dash rf to remove the files recursively. And then grub and hit enter. There you go. Now we can exit the root user and close the terminal here. We can close up also time shift. And now we can restart our machine. And of course, we will crash the machine because Grub is not anymore installed. There you go. So what we need to do, we need to boot from a live ISO with time shift so that we can restore the whole system and also the Grub bootloader. So let me exit here the virtual machine and turn the machine off. We are simulating anyway a PC here. So and go to the information tab here to my CD-ROM and we need to use a live installation ISO. So for this tutorial, I'm gonna use Ubuntu as I have already an ISO downloaded in my system. So I'll just click browse here to attach it. Go to my downloads here and select the ISO and click choose volume and click apply. And next, what we want to do, we just start up the machine. And we will booting up on the Ubuntu Live ISO. And here, what we need to do is to try Ubuntu without installing, because we don't need to install it. We just need to boot the Live ISO. So we'll just hit the first option. And we are now on the desktop. Let me adjust first the display setting here to match my resolution. There you go. And we can close up the window here and we can pull up now a terminal. And let me go here full screen again 
and increases also the font size. So the first thing we need to do here on the live ISO is to actually add the time shift repository to Ubuntu. So to do this, we'll type in sudo apt-add-repository, and then we'll type in ppa colon, then tg, which is the name of the developer of time shift, and then 2008, and then a slash, and then ppa, and then hit enter. So we are asked here to enter the PPA to the Ubuntu repository. So we'll just press enter to continue. There you go. So let me clean up the terminal. Now we need to update the whole thing. So we'll type in sudo apt-get update. And now we can install timeshift by typing in sudo apt-get install timeshift and hit enter. And TimeShift is installed, so we can close the terminal. And let's pull up now TimeShift. And of course, as a snapshot type, we select rsync and we click next. Our disk is recognized, so we'll select it and hit next. And here you see a few informations here. First of all, because we are on a live USB, we'll see here live USB mode. That means only restoring is possible, which is fine. And we see our snapshot here. So let's click this snapshot here and click restore. And now we need to select the target device. So our root path is actually on VDA2, which is correct. So we'll leave this as is. The boot directory is also on root. So we'll let this as is. The boot slash EFI, it's the EFI partition, which is on VDA1. This is correctly detected. And the home partition is on root as well. So I'll keep this as default. Now let's check also the bootloader option. So we'll click the button here. And here we need to actually reinstall Grub, but not on VDA because this is for MBR system. So we'll click on the drop down here and we select our VFAT file system for 200 megabytes VDA1. This is our EFI partition and this is where we need to install Grub. And we can update the Grub menu, that's fine. And we click close. Now we click next. It's going to make first a dry run to see if everything goes well. And here is a list of files that are going to be restored. So I'll just click next. And one more time, we can check our mount points here. So VDA2 is our root directory. It's on a mount point slash mount, which is correct. And VDA1 is our EFI directory, which is mounted on boot EFI, which is also correct. So we'll just click next. And now it's going to take a moment to restore the snapshot and installing the bootloader. And there you go. So restore is completed. So we can close up from the window here and we can close time shift and we can power off our machine. We just need to now remove the live ISO. So I go right here on the boot option and deselect the CD and then reboot the machine again. And if everything went well, we should be greeted again by the grub bootloader. And there you go. So we enter the installation here. Enter my password. And there you go, we are back on the desktop. Now let's go check again our CUPS package. So let me pull up a terminal again. And again, I'll go full screen here and increase the font sizes and type in sudo pacman s CUPS and hit enter. Enter the sudo password. And you can see here the reinstalling warning is not anymore there because we went back in time with the snapshot we restored before. So I'll type in N here to exit the installation and close the terminal. Now let's try another snapshot on a USB stick here. So I'll plug in here my USB stick and there you go, it's recognized here in the system. And I'll pull again up time shift, enter my password. And now let's go to the settings here and as location, we want to select STA1, which is our USB stick. So then I click OK. And as you can see now, we have no snapshots in there. So we need to create one. So let's create the snapshot by clicking Create. And again, it's going to take a moment to create a snapshot on the USB stick. This might take a little bit longer than on the internal drive. That's fine. And so I'll be back when it's done. And there you go. The snapshot is now created. So again, we can click on it and click browse 
and we can go through the directories here so let's check again the user directory share we have all our folders and files here these are again all system files only so let's do the same thing we did before so let's again install our cups package let me pull up a terminal again and go full screen and type in sudo pacman dash s cups and hit enter enter my sudo password and let's install cups by hitting enter and that's installed so again let's destroy our grub bootloader and i'll switch again to the root user by typing in su and a dash and enter my password and again i go to the boot directory cd slash boot and i know the grub directory is there so we'll type in rm dash rf and then grub and hit enter now let's exit the root user and close the terminal and let's close up time shift again and let's put up our machine again and again because grub is not anymore there so we are not going to be able to boot the machine up and there you go as you can see grub is not working so let's turn off the machine again in your case you might turn off the pc and we need again to boot from the live iso so again i'm going to use the ubuntu live iso so i'll switch off the machine here go to my info tab and attach the iso which is already there just enable the cd in the boot options and apply and then we start the machine up and let's go again into the ubuntu live installer and again we need to click on try ubuntu without installing so let's start the system up and again let me change my display settings here so that you can see also better there you go let me close the window here and again let's pull up a terminal and again i'll go full screen and increase the font size so again we need to reinstall again the ppa repository for time shift because we're booting on a live iso so we'll do this by typing in again sudo apt add dash repository and then we type in ppa colon t g our developer name then 2008 and then slash ppa and hit enter now let's press enter to add the repository to the ubuntu repositories there you go i clean up the terminal and let's update now the whole repositories by typing in sudo apt dash get update and hit enter and now we can install time shift by typing in sudo apt dash get install time shift and hit enter and there you go so we can close the terminal and pull up time shift again and we select of course our sync as a snapshot type and click next and here we select the snapshot location so again we have one snapshot present in our main disk here vda2 but we have also the snapshot we just created on our usb stick which is sda1 so i'll click this one here and click next and here is our snapshot so i'll just click the snapshot here and click restore and now we need to pay attention here on where again to select the target device so this is correctly selected because our target device is vda2 this is our disk where our installation is the boot directory is on root that's fine the boot efi directory is also correctly recognized and the home directory is also correctly recognized because it's on root device so let's go again to the bootloader options and again we need to change this because this is going to try to install grub on vda but this is meant for a bios mbr system which we are not in this case so we need to click on the drop down here and select vda1 our efi directory and i'll let the option to update the grub menu checked and click close and then we click next it's going to make a dry run first to see if everything goes well and to see the files which are going to be restored so this might take a moment and i'll be back when it's done so here is the list of files which are going to be restored and so we click next and again the one last check of our mount points so those are correct vda2 is our root partition it's going to be mounted under the slash directory and vda1 our efi partition is going to be mounted under boot efi which is correct and then we just hit next so now we need to just wait for the snapshot to be restored so i'll be back when it's done 
And there you go, the restore is completed. So now we can click close and also close the time shift window. And let's power off the machine because I need to remove the live ISO. And so I go here to the information tab and deselect here my CD and click apply. And now let's put out the machine again. And if everything goes well, we will be greeted by Grub. And there you go. So we just enter the installation here. Type in my password. And we are back on the desktop. Now let's check again for our CAPS package. So let's pull up again one terminal. And go full screen here and increase the font size and type in sudo pacman dash s cups and enter the sudo password. And as you can see, the reinstalling warning is not there because we went back in time with time shift. So let me exit the installation here by typing n and close up the window. And this is the full recovery. So this is how you can recover your Arch install using TimeShift also from an external live ISO. I hope you enjoyed the video guys. If you did, please hit the like button below and subs to the channel if you haven't already. Subs really helps us out guys. And if you want to support the channel, please visit our Patreon website. Thank you so much for watching the video guys and I'll see you in the next one.